Hello everyone, it's Mark and welcome back. In this video, I want to talk to you about the number one problem with the Marchman Act. What is the number one problem with the Marchman Act? The number one problem is the guardianship statute. That's right, the guardianship statute. So let me take you back about seven years ago when we first launched our practice drug and alcohol attorneys. And at that time, we were seeing a lot of cases where there was primary substance use, alcohol, marijuana, and other types of drugs, and maybe some pills too. Fast forward seven years, and we are seeing uh, cases where there is significant mental illness. I'm talking about bipolar, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, multiple personality disorders, eating disorders, um, and sometimes those are coupled with substance use, and sometimes uh, they are not. And this has been somewhat of a dramatic shift over the last two years, and without getting political, there certainly seems to be a correlation uh, between the uptick in mental health cases and the COVID-19 crisis because people have been isolated and um, things of that nature. And so, um, you know, we've been getting lots of calls and people are saying, well, I want to march one out my loved one. And I said, well, hold on a second. Let's talk about that because I think there's a better, there's a better solution here. And perhaps this is not something I would have said seven years ago, but certainly now with the, uh, with the, the guardianship statute and my partner order is so absolutely fabulous at using it for these types of cases. So, I, it, it, frankly, at this point, um, I wouldn't say the Marchman Act is obsolete, um, but but uh, if it's done alone and you have a serious mental health issue going on, I think that it's uh, it's pretty darn close. So the guardianship statute was really intended uh, when it was first created for for cases a bit like you know when my father was uh, was getting older and before he passed away and having having issues of of you know of, uh, of uh, dementia and, and evidence of stroke damage and the idea would have been if we needed to we could have gone into court and got a court order. To, to take control of his medical decisions, financial decisions, things of that nature. Thank goodness we never had to cross that bridge. But when you're dealing with somebody who has serious mental health issues and they won't go to treatment, um, they won't uh, take the medication they need to, to be stabilized, they have access to finances, they want to determine where they live, who they live with, and their ability to travel, the Marchman Act simply just doesn't cut the mustard. So, so the Marchman Act um, is a treatment-specific statute. What do I mean by that? I mean that it's a court order that says your loved one will go to treatment for a period of up to 90 days, which as I've said in previous videos can be extended, sometimes you know, 180 days and even 270 days. So it's a treatment specific statute and, and perhaps there are times when that is appropriate. But the guardianship statute gives you a lot more control, okay? It will give you the authority to make medical decisions, i.e. to put your loved one into treatment, but it also could give you access to the medical records, where they live, who they live with, their ability to travel. Uh, controlling of their finances. I mean, really a broad, a, a broad, a broad, excuse my French, a broad array of things that you might need in order to make sure that they are not only going to treatment, but they're going to be there long enough um, so that they, they can finally rid themselves of this curse and you can finally uh, live a normal life and so can they. And, and obviously we're talking about the miracle of recovery. Now, what's the best of both worlds? Well, the best of both worlds is to do a Marchman Act and a guardianship together. And we do, we do a lot of those. We do a lot of Marchman Act and guardianship together. And why do we do that? Well, if we've obviously got substance use and we can prove it, that's great for a Marchman Act. And what's really great about the Marchman Act is that we can file at least the first part of it on what's known as an ex parte basis. What does that mean? It means that the police and one of our investigators is going to go to the scene and pick up your loved one, sometimes off of the street, and if you don't know where they are, we're gonna go find them for you, and take them somewhere where they can be safe, and we can keep them there for five to seven days until we can get into court, either on part two of the Marchman Act or on a, on a, on a hearing for an emergency temporary guardianship. So that, then, that, now you're really talking about something that's powerful, right? And if you can, you know, if you are willing to sort of see the process through, you could have a Marchman Act court order, you can have a guardianship court order, and that means you have two different judges that in theory you can go back to to enforce your rights as either the guardian or the parent or whoever it might be who is seeking relief. But one of the things that frustrates me and makes me really, really upset is when I get people calling me and there's two issues that they, they call me about and, and that sort of I find frustrating and I find very upsetting for them. Number one, number one is when they say they've spoken to another lawyer who either does sort of, you know, elder law or they've spoken to the family lawyer who tells them that it can't be done. You can't get guardianship over somebody who has a mental health disorder. And I'm here to tell you that with all due respects to some of my colleagues 
who, who practice in that arena, they simply don't know what they're talking about. We have been doing this successfully for seven years, and I'm here to tell you that if you want to get guardianship over your loved one, you don't need to wait until they're old enough to be using a walker, because frankly, if they've got a substance use and mental health disorder, they're never going to get old enough where you have to worry about it. Okay, that's the second thing, the, excuse me, that's the first thing. The second thing that makes me frustrated is when they've spoken to a Marchman Act lawyer who says, well, you've got substance use here, and so you should definitely file a Marchman Act. And I'm here to tell you that you don't put a square peg into a round hole. Not every case is a Marchman Act. And if there are serious mental health issues, shoehorning the case into a Marchman Act is simply not the right thing to do. And I have had people call me and tell me they want a Marchman Act, and I say, listen, you don't have enough here for a Marchman Act or it's not the right thing and I'm not going to take your case because I'm going to be doing you a huge disservice by doing so. You know, we have the only law firm in the entire country that does nothing but help families whose loved ones have substance use and mental illness and I'm si simply not going to shortchange you and I'm not going to violate our mission statement which is to help you to save your loved one. And so um, if you call me and you say, listen, I want a Marchman Act, I'm going to give you an honest opinion and tell you whether or not you can really file it. The other thing is obviously if, if there is substance use but we can't prove it, then what do you do? You can't shoehorn that into a March Act because it's going to get in front of a judge and he or she is going to dismiss your case. The guardianship is the way around that because if there's mental health issues going on, even if you can't prove substance use or there isn't substance use, you can still file for guardianship, you can still put them into treatment, you can put them into a facility that can care for somebody who has a primary mental health issue and you can get them the help they need. And so look, I, uh, I apologize if this was a bit of a rant, but I felt like this needed to be told, what the number one problem is with the Marchman Act. And the statute in and of itself isn't bad, it's just the conditions in which it's being used. Our environment has changed, the needs of our clients have changed. And so with that being said, if you have any more questions, we are here to help you. And that's what we do. So anyway, with that said, rant over. Thanks for tuning in, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.